coming to you from the heart of America, beautiful Kansas City, Missouri. Welcome to the Hands of Christ Church Sunday morning worship service with Apostle Charles Brown and Pastor Jackie Brown. We're joining the service already in progress. Do you have a gift? Yes, yes. Then you automatically ought to be able to stir your gift up. Because he said, touch me, Lord. See, when he touches you, yes. uh -huh. you begin to stir it up. Yes. Then they said, lay your hands on me. Yes. When God lays his hand, yes. you ought to be able to stir up your gifts. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus. As I come before you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. God, I'm coming before you and asking you to use me for your glory. I'm nothing, God, without you. Nothing. But, Father, I know by the grace that you had stored upon me that I might come to do your will and your will alone. Not no show for the outside world, but to glorify and magnify you, Lord. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary, that they won't see me, but him who dwelleth in me they might hear. For Father, all these I ask in your only begotten Son, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Giving down the first to all honors due. To my God, him who is called, I am that I am. Him who is called, Eli. God has many names. But there's still one God. Mm, to his divine son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe Isaiah called him Manuel, which means God with us. To the divine Holy Spirit, him who leads us and guides us to all truth. The pastor, evangelist. Laymans of the gospel. Mothers, officers, and deacons and friends, bless the Lord. Amen. For there I counted them one more day that the Lord had let me see. I don't know about you. I got to speak for myself that he allowed me to see. It wasn't because of goodness, but because of his grace and his mercy that was stowed upon us. Praise God. Listen. I guess everybody, well, I guess didn't know, but there's been so much picked in my text. I heard it this morning. I heard it in here. So that only lets me know it is confirmation. Yes, yes. That's all about God, yes. Listen, we're not going to hold you long. Then we'll have your Bible. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians. That's one of the Apostle Paul's letters to the Thessalonian church. Sister Russell, would you read the first, let's start at the seventh verse. For God did not call us to, to uncleanliness, uncleanliness, but in holiness. Amen. Now go down to the 13th to the 18th verse. Okay. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we are who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. 
will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, mm -hmm. angel, and with trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. Then he who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. That's good enough right there. Uh, uh. If it's a thought we'd like to use today, are you ready? Are you ready? Been ready. Amen. Are you ready? Hmm. The Apostle Paul wrote these letters to the Ephesian church. At that time, the Ephesian church was a young church, very young. But in the church, okay, there was a lot of love there. There was a lot of joy there, a lot of peace, happiness, and a lot of prayer. They were praying for one another. But just like any house, they have their downfalls. You had leaders there in the church. Some of them were Jews. And the Jews wanted to teach Judaism. You had Greeks. They wanted to teach about their godness. But God has a few fearful, godly people that went to the synagogue and heard the Apostle Paul preach the Word of God. Now, what we must understand, the Word of God. Paul was preaching about Jesus and Him crucified. There's no other gospel Except Jesus. You can holler and hoop, jump up and down, but there's still one gospel. That's Jesus and Him crucified. There in Ephesians that we have to understand, there was a hundred, a hundred thousand people. And we had, they had all different types of people. And when we go to different types of people, we got different types of mind. One person wants to be bigger than the other. Hmm. That sounds like in a bunch of churches today. Everybody wants to be a pastor, but nobody wants to pray. Everybody. Instead of saying that we must understand God chooses leaders in his house. It would look funny if we had five pastors in this house. Of course, we must understand that they are leaders in houses of the day that's not been called by God. Well, listen. We must understand this. Listen. By Paul's writing to the Ephesian church, he starts out and he lets us know. Right here, seventh verse. It says, God has not called us unto uncleanliness. No, he didn't. He called us unto for holiness. Oh, yeah. The Bible lets us know them who worship God must worship him in truth and in what? Spirit. A lot of us don't really want to let our hair down to praise God. We're kind of afraid because what people will say on that telephone this evening. 
I hate to say that sometimes, but listen, that telephone could be the worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Before you get home, it's already been spread. Did you see her? Did you see him? Face all messed up. Eyeliner came out. Eyelashes was hanging. Listen, I don't care about what anybody says. I'm going to praise the Lord. Don't care. Don't care. I don't care if you call grandma. I just tell her she needs to come get some too. Hello there. You just said, come on at the table. Listen, you want to call and tell somebody how he acted? Oh, that's fine, but you should have been there too. Hello, somebody. Talk to me. I, I want him to what? Lay his hands on me. See, what he lay his hands on you? Listen here. Feet get light. Oh, somebody, somebody, come on now. Hands get to clapping. Tears running down your eyes. Nose all running. Ah, that's right. I let this nose run all day long for Jesus. Don't care what you say anybody else said. Because listen, when I think about what he had done for me, Come on, can I say it? I'll tear this old place up. I remember where I was and where I am now. That's the thing, people, still in your past. Come on, somebody, talk with me. All they remember about what you used to do. Get tired of hearing that. Ain't thinking about where I was, where I am now. Want to remember. Want to remember you as a crackhead. Want to remember these guys used to run back the back doors. Other men's, women's house. But they can't understand that I've been changed and rearrange. They don't understand that. When I used to drink all the beer I could handle, but they still want to bring me a six pack. But it's still saying, praise God. Want to look back. And talk about it. Don't see a change because they too blind to see. This is what this is all about what so-called Christians are. They won't look at your future, where you're going, but always what's behind you. I heard my wife say, People call, call me chatty, but I told them, she dead. She dead. But God had took chatty and raised up Sister Brown. Sister Brown don't run to the places she used to go. Listen, I can say it. Anything worth having is worth waiting for. Can I say that? She knows her past, but I thank God. Now she's my pastor. I used to run home and pray for her until one night 
something got a hold of her. She called me, crying. I just took my guns. I got to go. Got there, and she was sitting on the payphone, crying. She said, I'm tired of this life, this lifestyle. It ain't for me anymore. Amen. There on the steps, she accepted him in her life. Amen. Listen, still folks today, they're not going to look at the change in you. They're going to look at the downfall that you used to do all the downfalls and will bring it up to your face. I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember. If folks stay out of your past, you'll be all right. But listen, they're not going to, but listen, let them talk. Oh yeah, only thing that does is just make me strong. Somebody, come on. Go on, if you talk about, they talked about Jesus, how much more? They going to slatterize you. I remember. Listen, go ahead and remember. But I remember what they done to Jesus. Somebody, come on. That same mouth, they praised him. That same mouth, they convicted him. Oh, yes. But listen, the Bible lets it know that Paul taught it, started out saying, don't be ignorant of the word. He don't want us to be. God does not want us to be ignorant of his word. Let's look at this. Let's look at it. The word ignorant means Lacking of education or knowledge. Mm -hmm. Lacking. Comprehending. Listen. God wants us to be. He wants us to know his word. Well, I, I, I don't understand. That's the reason why he had an open invitation to come to the altar. Listen, when you had came to the altar, if you had stayed there, you might have received yes. Yes. that Holy Ghost power. Yes. Because listen, I remember the times I didn't understand God's word, but I loved to pray. I was a praying deacon. Oh yeah. But the word, I couldn't. But one night, we had a revival. And I got up and came down. And I stayed there. Something happened to me. I was touched by the hand of the Lord. He touched this. He touched this. He gave me understanding of his word. And listen, why do you say that? For the Bible lets us know that any man, lack of wisdom, let him ask of God. Why? Because he's just to give. I believe that's in the book of Timothy. Uh, let me see. It lets us know that God does not want us. It says... Study to show thyself approved. We must read this word. I'm not telling you to read the Bible, read the whole Bible in 10 days because it's impossible. 
But just pick that Bible up. I don't care if you read one verse. And read it until you get the understanding. The problem is today, we won't read that word and we won't pray to ask God for the knowledge. God wants us to. He said, blessed are the, blessed are they that are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The word he used is blessed. Because why? You're blessed because you want more. You want to learn more about God's divine word. But he knows your prayers, your sincere prayers, he knows about. Oh, yes, he does. And he does not want us to be. See, when we are ignorant to God's word, listen, we won't. We can't grasp a hold of God's word. No. How did we know that Jesus died for us if we don't read it? Because listen, there are a whole lot of falseness in the world today. Mm -hmm. Whole lot of folks that are false. They'll tell you that Jesus Christ is here right now. Well, you jump up and say amen to that. But listen, Jesus Christ is not here. He's not going to walk this earth anymore. His first coming, he did it. But his second coming, as Paul began to tell the church of Ephesians, the second event will take place. It will. Listen. We might start to listen. We're going to be running some scriptures, so you might even get a book and a paper. Because, listen, God wants us to know. Oh, yes. yes. Hebrews 13, chapter. Look at the fourth verse. Anybody have it? Can you read it for me? And then somebody, would they come turn with me to Hebrews 12 and 20? Hebrews 13 and 4. Mm -hmm. Marriage is honorable and, and all, and the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Amen. Hebrews 12 and, and 20. For they could not endure that which is commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Listen, we must understand one thing. Paul talked about, and yes, he talked about marriage. He talked about that. But you must understand there will be a marriage. There will be a marriage feast. When the church and Christ should come together as one. The bride, which is the church, and the groom, which is Christ. And the doors of the temple shall be closed. It's going to be said too late. It's going to be too late. Why is it going to be too late? Because he's given every last one of us a chance to get our what? House in order. God wants us to be clean on the inside out. Yes. Let's understand one thing. If we're clean inside out, then God can what? He can use us. Yes. Oh yes, he can use us. Yes. Hebrews 12 lets us know. We must fear God. Because God is a consumed fire. Well, let's look at that. 2 King 18 chapter. We're going to talk about it. 38 
the 40th verse. 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. Excuse me, 1 King, I'm sorry, I said 2 King. 1 King, I'm sorry. 18th chapter, the 38th through the 40th verse. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice of the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. Mm. God spoke with fire. Listen, if we, and I want to say this, if we fear God, we would walk in the spirit of God. A lot of us don't fear God. Oh, why do you say that? Because if you fear God, then you wouldn't be fear. You wouldn't be scared of anything else. Because it says perfect love cast out what? All fear. Listen. God wants us to give him reverence. Give him honor. Because who he is. But the thing about it is, if we really fear God, we wouldn't do the things that we did. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. Wouldn't be that much. It wouldn't be hatred like it is now in the world. It starts here. Then it spreads. People don't understand. God speaks to the church. The church is a group of believers in Christ Jesus. He's talking to us. We need to fear God. Put away this up. All this all other stuff. And fear him with reverence. Give him my dues what he does. Listen, if God has done something for you, you got a right to praise him. Sitting there mumbling and grumbling. Forget the dumb stuff. Give him the praise that he deserves. Now God, did God do something for you? Yes, he has. If he done something for you, you ought to praise him for it. Yesterday, so many people didn't see yesterday, but what about now? God has blessed us, every last one of him. All of us. He gave us eyes to see. Ears to hear. Nose to smell. He gave us legs to walk. But we can't praise him. But we say we love God. How do you love him? Because love is action. But yet, we still bike biting, bike biting one another. God is love. Them that loveth him, they love one another. You have the love of God in you. No matter creed or color, God loves. God loved us. So much he did that he gave. He gave. He gave. His only begotten son. Isn't that enough? Hmm. 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 But God let us know. He lets us know. In the days of Noah, he let us know. There won't be any more water. More water. Water won't destroy this earth. Nah. He done it. And by that symbol, it's the rainbow lets us know. Why? That's a sign he gave us. But listen, God is giving the church a sign every day. 
but we're too blind to see. We're too, we, our ears are too clogged up with the things of the world because of what he's trying to tell us. God tells the church, get out of the world. Come out from among them. We're trying to walk. We're trying to talk like the world. We're trying to act like the world. We'll fall like the world. Jesus told us, we are the children of the light. What does the light have to do with the darkness? Doesn't have anything. That's just like salt and pepper. It don't mean. Sugar and salt, it don't mix. Well, well, let me say it like this. You women, y'all make cakes and pies. Take a little sugar in there, then put a lot of salt, what you got? You ain't got nothing. Not one thing. But understand, that's what he tells us. Come out. We don't have, listen, we do not have any time to do pleasures of the world. Oh, I sit and I watch. I watch the young women today lay out there for flaws and they sell. And listen, they mama and somebody, woohoo, look at my baby. And there's some old man sitting up there lurking. Oh, uh, oh, I sit there and watch that. I said, look at this. This is a shame. All I kids know is what? Dancing and twisting. And some old man is like they're lusty. I ain't talking about the teeth. I'm talking about the babies. But yet, our mothers today are saying, oh, my baby sure look good out there. <laughs> but if somebody grabbed one of them, see what happened. Somebody rub one of our children the wrong way. See what happened. And then you want to kill him because he rubbed. But look what you had made him of. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 13 and 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not changed. We change, but he has not. He's still loving us in spite of everything that we do, he still loves us. All the cussing and fussing still loves us. Everything we still walking around here. So many Christian men walking around there sagging. I uh, don't say, oh, Lord, because I know. But is that of God? Nah. We still want to be like the world. And God keeps saying, come out of the world. Come out. Come out. Oh, but my cousin likes me to dress like this. Okay. The scripture said, them who love mother, father, sister, brother, Husband, wife, more than him, not worthy. You're not worthy of it. So if they'd like to see you, then you need to go back out there then. But me, I don't care what they like. I know what Jesus expects out of me. I know what he does. But here, there are signs that God has left in his word for his people. Listen, the signs that are shown, someone get Luke 21, 23 to 20, excuse me, 25 to 28. First Corinthians, 
15, 50 to 53. The signs that God has. Luke 21, 25 to 28. Signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's, men's hearts falling, them from fear and expectations of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. First Corinthians 15, chapter 50 to 52. Brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, shall your mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. 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 Matthew 24, 36-41. Matthew 24, 36-41. But of the, that day and hour, no one knows, even, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them all away. Mm -hmm. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding in the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Amen. Right there. Amen. The signs are letting us know. There will be two. Two women. Working. One shall be caught up. The other one left. That's letting us know. One wasn't ready. If you think about the ten virgins. Five wise and five foolish. The wise kept oil. Because of why? The bridegroom was coming. But the other was foolish. They messed up. How much are we? Are we the wise or are we the foolish? Will, be we, will we be ready? The Bible lets us know. He comes like a thief and a robber by night. Nobody will know he's coming. What will be done with us. Drinking and eating and being merry. Not thinking that he's coming. Well, I've heard that so much. But let me tell you something. The signs are showing more now than ever before. Look at this. 40 degrees outside. We haven't seen no snow. Cold, but look at California. They're getting snow and rain. Look at Texas. Cold down there. God is showing, but we're still not listening. Not listening. It comes back, and I love what it says. But as the day of Noah, 
Noah told them it's going to rain. But what did they do? Kicked it. They kicked it. They kicked it. What are we doing today? Kicking it. We don't believe it. They know a priest that sermon. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Uh, they looked at him and laughed. Talking about it ain't rained yet, so one is going to. At times we must understand if God said it, it's going to happen. But the world, they cannot comprehend the words. And look what happened. It rained. Noah, after everything God had told him, look what happened. All the beasts of the field, the birds, the door was locked. Nobody could get in. God had the key. The same thing will happen at the marriage feast. The door will be locked. And guess what? We won't be able to get in. Okay. Okay. Matthew 24, 22 to 26. Matthew 24, 22 to 26. Have been saved, but for the sake of the elect, those they shall be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there is, he is, do not believe him. For false Christ and, and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mishe- mislead, if possible, even the elect. Even elect. But behold, I have told you in advance, if therefore they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go forth. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. Don't. It lets us know that yes, he said, even in this time, there are many false prophets, false teachers. They're here, right now. Listen, oh, we love that. Because why? Oh, he was hollering and screaming. I got goosebumps. I just cold, that's all. Feelings should not do it. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Listen, if we ain't right, it's time for us to get right. It's time. The word will slice us backwards and forwards if we ain't right. But why? God wants us to be ready. He wants his children to be right. But listen. For many of his elect's sake, he'll shorten the time. That means God said, for my elect, my chosen, I'll shorten it. In other words, there's a point in time that he's coming. But he said, but listen, just for my elect, I'll come quicker. God says, it's it. God wants us to be ready. He wants us to be ready. Listen, Jesus Christ, he died for us all. For the remission of all, not some, all of our sins. He hung on that cross for every last one of us. Ain't now one of us is sinless. If you are, you're lying. The truth ain't in you. Because the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us. Don't walk around here and think you're all that in a bag of chips. Because you're not. Jesus Christ said it, and I believe it. I'm far from perfect. But that which is perfect shall come. Then I'll be just like him. I'll be like him. Praise God. I'm trying to get out of here now. 
First Timothy, Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and it says this. It shall come a time. Men will be lovers of themselves. Oh, yes. Proud, boasters, braggers. Lovers of themselves. I'm all this. I'm all that. The word of God has no bearing on me. I'm gone. I got all of this. I don't need it. But the Bible says it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Just because you got money, you'll choose money over your God. Mm-hmm. Yes. Listen. And let's just know they'll be ignorant. Of the word. Yes. But you know what? Listen. Blindness will make you ignorant. Of the word. Oh yeah. Then it goes. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 15 and 50. It says this. And listen. Flesh and blood. Will not enter in. Will not enter. Won't make it. Listen. Galatians the fifth chapter will let you know. All of this. Liars. Adultery. Fornicators. All of this will not enter. Unto the kingdom of heaven. You must have joy. Peace. Love. Long suffering. These will get you in the kingdom. That you will have the love of God inside you. Yes. Because the love of God will make us what? It will make us act right. Listen. Then Paul lets us know all of this and still we won't, we won't understand. But listen, there's a way that God gave us. There's a way out that we can get our house in order. There's a way. The Bible lets us know. I think that's in Matthew. Matthew 18, 1 through 6. It lets us know. Except we come converted as a little child. In other words, listen, we got to convert. We got to, listen, deny ourselves. Humble. They say you will not, you won't get in unless you are what? Converted. You got to be changed. You got to want to walk right, talk right, love right. To convert, to be humble. As little children. John 3, 1 through 6. Man, they Nicodemus. But the thing about it is, Jesus told Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must be born again. Well, wait a minute. How can I be born again? I can't go into my mother's womb the second time. Jesus said, flesh and blood. It won't do it. You've got to be converted. You've got to be changed. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things. Here it goes. The old things. Uh Uh-huh. The old things. It's got to be a change in your life. Stop hating and start loving. Mm Mm-hmm. We say we are Christians, but we got so much malice and hate in our heart. Starts here. All of that is at the table. All we got to do is come. Come on, talk to me. Everything. But to be converted, to be changed, this is what God wants. You've got to be changed. Stop walking around here 
like an ostrich and come down to heaven. Come down to earth. Understanding that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. This is what we must all do. Then when we do that, we ask, we'll change. Then you find yourself loving your enemies, them who talk about you, them who misuse you. You'll find yourself shedding tears for them who stab me in the back, Amen. but yet you still love them. Amen. Everything that once you have been converted, be re regenerate. Listen, the apostle Paul said it in Romans 12. One, the first chapter said, the first verse, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, the mercy of God. Yes. That what? That you do what? What do we have to do? A sacrifice your, yourself to God. God is waiting for that. He sacrificed his son for us. God wants us to sacrifice our lives to him. Jesus Christ wants us to be the Lord and Savior of our lives. He wants to be the governor of your life if you let him. Then Paul turns around and lets us know there's going to come a time at the great judgment sound that the dead in Christ shall rise. Hmm. The dead in Christ shall rise. And them that are alive shall be caught up. The rapture. Paul here is talking about the second coming of Christ. That's the reason why I said, will you be ready? He said, listen, all these things, the trumpet when it sound, the archangel, we shall be changed of the twinkling of our eye. We will listen. This old flesh, is going back to the earth, which you come from. But the spirit is going. Yes. It is up to you where your spirit is going to rest. Can I say that? It's up to you where your spirit is going to rest. I heard somebody say, I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. I don't know morning, noon, evening, night, but I know one thing, I'm going home. Well, how do you know that? Because this word tells me. That tells me. Well, how does that word tell you? Because why? I've accepted him as my Lord and my personal Savior. He governors my life. He changed my life. He took a nothing and made something out of it. This is the reason why I know that Jesus loves me. Are you going to be ready when he comes? Are you going to be? Ain't no sense in saying, I think so. It ain't going it ain't going to help you. Oh, uh, well, my mom said I'm going. I'm going to see Jesus. Don't let that happen. Oh, I was baptized. Went out in my early age. Yeah, don't worry about that. That's not going to get you in. Well, I pay tithes every Sunday. That's not going to get you in. I see you in the car. I'm a usher. I'm a deacon. I'm a preacher. It ain't going to get you in. All of it, only one thing going to get you in by you accepting Christ yes. as your Lord. Yes. The Bible lets us know them who every year 
Let the ear, let them hear what the Spirit says into the church. Yes. Your church. Amen. Listen, let me say this. There's nothing. Everything that you hear, God's going to hold you accountable for it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't, I, don't do that. Because God's going to hold you accountable. All I want to know, are you going to see Jesus? Will you be ready? Mm -hmm. If you don't know, you need to walk down that aisle with me. If you don't know, well, I come to church, that don't mean nothing. You got to come. You got to be converted, and you got to want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, I'm a member of the church. That don't mean nothing. You've got to know I got Jesus in my heart. And he changed my life. Not changed, he changed it completely. This is what it's all about. Thank you for joining us today. We count it an honor and a privilege to minister to you. Connect with us at handsofchristchurch.com. And if you're ever in the Kansas City area, we'd love to meet you. Be sure to tune in every Sunday morning for another powerful message from the Word of God. Be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media channels.